Hello, IO viewers. Well, what better way to follow up an interview with a real life astronaut than to check out a virtual spaceship? So I am here with Amanda in the augmented reality booth. And uh, Amanda, you're going to show me something cool from the NASA website. Yeah. So here you can see on the NASA website, they're showing 3D models of their rovers. Here we have the Curiosity rover. And they're actually using the model VR web component to put that 3D asset on their website. Oh, that's very cool. Now, you said it's a it's a web component, so do they need to like NPM install something to get it working? Or? It's actually markup, oh. uh, so very simple to just put on your website. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, that's very cool. And this 3D model, um, like what, what file format is that? Yeah. So we recommend using GLTF, uh -huh. um, but it also supports USDZ and GLB. Okay, and is that something most like commercial 3D modeling tools will export to? You should be able to export to that easily. I see you've got that little button down there in the, in the bottom right. What does that do? Yeah, so this actually is the new feature that we're launching at I.O. today. And what it allows you to do is open up what we call Scene Viewer. So Scene Viewer allows you to take this 3D models uh -huh. and actually place it in your real world space. Whoa, no way. So here you can see the QRC rover at scale. Wow, it's like there's a real life spaceship here in the booth, but not really. It's just very, actually very nicely rendered. It, it, it kind of fooled me. Yep, and so you can actually manipulate this in your own space. So you'll see it at full scale, but you can also shrink it down so that it can actually fit in your living room. Ah, okay, yes. I, so if I want to put the Curiosity rover on my coffee table, I now can just by shrinking it down a little bit. Yep. And so how did you get the, um, how did you get the size specification? Like, apparently this was built real life or this is showing it in real life and you're able to shrink it down? Yeah, so NASA, when they built the 3D model, decided to build it at scale. Okay. And so that's the model we're referencing. Gotcha, yep. very cool. Um, and so and if I'm a developer and I want to turn my model viewer component into this cool scene viewer augmented reality experience, what do I have to do? Yeah, so there's no need to build an app for this. Okay. All you actually do is go into the markup and you add the AR attribute, which is literally the letters A and R. That, so I gotta super simple to do. <laughs> I type two letters and I get all that. Yes. All right, well, that, that sounds easy. I think yeah. even I could do that. Yeah. Well, I could use a little pick-me-up after that demo. Let's uh, head on over here and see if I can find some caffeine. Hey, How, are you doing? How are you doing, Todd? I am doing well. I'm already excited for this demo because I see there's an espresso machine here. So uh, walk me through. All right, so what we're doing in here is we're showing an espresso machine coming to life in AR using this technology called augmented images. Okay. Uh, that's part of AR core. You well, want to give it a spin? Let's, yes, let's check it out. All right, so as soon as you look at this marker. So you're showing the image there. Yep. And it's telling you to look around. And now Whoa. it's annotated the machine with okay. information about its features. Let's see the little like pieces this. coming to life. Yep. There's, it's telling you about the dose control guy, uh, grinding. I need and my doses controlled. Yeah, and the precise temperature. What okay. would you do without that? And you could actually see an espresso being made here. Oh, fantastic. This is like a really powerful way for manufacturers to show uh, features of their product, which are otherwise just not, which are just lost in text. Mm -hmm. And this really makes the product come to life. Yeah. In that a is really powerful cool. way. And so this triggers the experience okay. once it recognizes. And now what happens once this image is recognized, it starts establishing a correspondence between the phone and the image. So the phone always knows exactly where it is in with response respect, to With yes. respect to the image. And when I say it establishes a correspondence in terms of a pose, that's position and orientation. So position in like X direction, in Y direction, and in Z direction. And also the orientation in three degrees, like pitch, yaw, and roll. Yep. So the phone knows exactly where it is with respect to the marker. Gotcha. So this kind of works best in places where you sort of have strict control over like the environment in which this image is going to appear and what's around it. Uh, yes. As if you're trying to augment real things, uh, you want to make sure that the image is rigid with respect to the thing that you're trying to augment. Gotcha. But if you just want the image itself specifically to come to life, that's all you need. Absolutely. To so think about like a, a scenario where uh, you're at a store and you want to see what's inside a box. So you could use an app to look at the box. It would recognize. Uh, the box as a marker, and you could actually have a sneak peek at like what's inside the box. Oh, okay. So like the model could like pop out of the box and I can exactly. see like exactly what my waffle iron or toaster or I need stuff for my kitchen. That's all gonna look without like. even opening it. Without even opening it. And up. then I won't get yelled at by shopkeepers. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Ashish. I, I learned a lot about augmented reality today. I'm gonna grab this espresso. Oh, it's not real. It's
but but the coffee beans are. Can, can I eat the coffee beans? Yes, you can. All right, I'm gonna take a few coffee beans to go. <laughs> you can take the coffee Thank beans. Thank you very off. much, live stream. I'm gonna go uh, get caffeinated.